Hello my lovely peeps. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. Today we are actually making a dessert. Yes, you've always seen me made savory dishes, but today we are going to make a dessert. And this dessert is 100% vegan. There is no dairy. There is um, there's no dairy, there is no milk, and it's kind of very unusual for an Indian dessert or mitai to be made out of non-dairy stuff. So we are going to make what is called a kaju barfi, but we will do our own twist and we will make a cardamom mango cashew marzipan, right? So we will do our own little twist to it and that's what it's going to be called. It's going to be absolutely delicious. I've only made it once before. So let's see if I can follow the steps and I can do as good as my teacher taught me. Uh, so come with me and let's try to make the cashew marzipan kaju barfi but with mango and cardamom okay so i'm gonna set the camera on this stand so we can actually get started and you can see my workstation okay so this is a quarter of a cup of water and a quarter of a cup of sugar just regular sugar you don't have to grind it you don't have to powder it and we have set it to boil so that it'll become a little stringy okay so we're going for a syrup that's what the consistency we are looking for and the perfect syrup would be if you this has been boiling for about four minutes and the way to check it is that if you get it between your fingers and pull it it makes a one string so that's kind of like your cue on this side I have one cup of cashews that I've actually ground and I don't like it finely ground so I've just made a rough grind. You can also strain it and find it, find it, find it super fine if you like. For this purpose, the cashews that you're going to be using are going to be the broken cashews. Don't use the full price, uh, really good quality cashews. The quality could be good but if the kernels are broken, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Also, chill your cashews in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes so that when you put it in the grinder it does not release all the oils and become a sticky paste okay so you can see mine is a coarse paste but the way they make it in the sweet shops they make it into a really fine powder okay now when your syrup reaches the one string consistency like i showed you it's a one string it's super hot so be very careful you are gradually going to add this cashew powder into the syrup And we are going to cook this till it comes together now I'm gonna add a hint of cardamom only because I just want it to be different and I don't only want to taste the cashew so it's gonna be just a pinch you can see it's literally just a pinch so I'm gonna put a pinch of cardamom and I'm gonna cook this cashew paste through okay so to the hot syrup we are cooking it till it comes together I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. I also have some mango essence and I have a piece of butter paper here onto which we are going to work this and shape this. Okay, so you see how it's coming together. So try to do this in a non-stick pan so that you'll know that it's well mixed and it's coming together. There you go. And it's going to start leaving the sides of this pan. You know, I'm going to work with my sweet spatula i'm gonna work with this one so i have a separate spatula for my sweets and savories and i i suggest that you should do that as well okay so this is cooking and it's gradually leaving the sides of the pan you see it's just gonna become very fudge like and it's going to start leaving the sides of the pan and it actually smells very creamy instead of, uh, even though there's no dairy in it, it smells really, really creamy. See, it's leaving the sides of the pan. Okay. And that's pretty much what we want. I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds more. Just to make sure that the, the cashew is not raw. And it's, it's going to get a nice gloss onto it. There you go. 
So if you're craving Indian Mithai and you're not able to go to the stores to buy Kaju Katli or Kaju Barfi, you can totally make this at home. Okay, so you see how this is like completely, it's moving like one big blob of fudge. That's basically what you want, okay? You're gonna take this and roll it out onto your butter paper. It's super hot, so be very, very careful. I'm gonna go ahead and add the mango essence. If you don't like mango, you can totally skip this step. Or if you want to really enjoy the taste of pure kaju, or cashew then don't add anything but I just wanted to do something different I was tired of the same old same old so I'm gonna give it a good mix and just knead it like you would knead a dough okay and it's gonna start cooling and it's going to start forming up in your hands so it's super duper hot be very careful just like with any candy making you definitely need this butter paper or you could work with two plastic sheets i just prefer parchment okay so as it cools it's going to become more and more manageable okay when it's super hot then it's running all over the place i'm just smelling to see if it even smells mangoish enough or not it's a very mild i think the cashew flavor takes over everything and you can barely smell the mango essence I also like to do this with rose petal jam and rose essence. It tastes really nice. So I'm actually making this for a client who is lactose intolerant and uh, they cannot do any gluten, they cannot do any lactose, but they definitely wanted something sweet for Mother's Day. So the guy is buying this for his wife. So you see how it's like nice and malleable and you can take it wherever you wanna take it that's how you it's really really pretty hot still but it's nice and glossy so you want to make sure that it's just nice and glossy so basically from one cup of cashews and a quarter cup of sugar this is how much cashew marzipan you can get and it's quite a lot actually so i'm gonna just spread this out with the spatula if you want you can put another sheet of um, you can put another sheet of parchment and you can use a rolling pin that's fine I just am quite comfortable working with this so the trick with this is that it shouldn't be very thick it needs to be thin and it needs to be This is a great sweet that you can make if you have to have vegan friends that are coming over or you want to send it to somebody because it's really um, stable. You can ship it. You can send it to your loved ones instead of all the dairy-based sweets and mitais in the Indian culture. This is totally non-dairy. It's only cashew and sugar and nothing else. So just keep working it and make it nice and thin. Just make it an even thinness and then tuck in the sides so that it'll have straight edges of some kind. Now, I am not a mitai artist. They call these mitais, right? The sweet meats. So I'm not a pastry artist by any means, but this little bit, I can wing it. If you ever made it, um, let me know in the comments below if this is something that you've ever tried to make or something that you feel excited about that you feel like, oh, you know what, maybe I'm going to try it. Um, I also have some saffron strands that I soaked in hot water and I don't know if they still have any color or not. They have a very mild color. So I'm just basically going to brush little lines of it. If you soak it in hot milk, then the saffron color really comes out. But because my client is lactose intolerant, no dairy for them. Okay, so it's, a, it's just a nice blank canvas. You can pretty much do anything you want with this. Now the next step I'm gonna do is something really fancy and you can absolutely skip this if you want. But guess what I have? Hi Nadira, welcome to my broadcast. We are making cashew mitai. 
look what I have. You see this? This is gold foil. So I'm gonna take this gold foil and I'm gonna put it all over this, but first we are going to cut it. So if you have a pizza cutter, you can use that. If you wanna use it, use a knife, you can use that. And usually this is cut in diamond shapes. So we're going to do diagonals and that should give us our diamond shapes. And you have to cut it while it's hot, okay? Don't wait for it to be cold because then it gets too tough. And because my powder was coarse, when I'm, when I'm cutting into it, I'm not getting very fine edges. If your powder is really finely ground, then you'll get very fine edges when you cut through this thing. Or even if you use a pizza cutter or a combination of both the things. The fine grinding of the powder plus the use of a pizza cutter. That would be the perfect thing. So be very gentle with it. It cools quite rapidly once it's spread out. You can still see it's pretty sticky and because I cannot move the paper, I just have to work my way around it. So I can smell the cardamom. I can really smell the mango now. I couldn't smell it before, but now I totally smell it. So you can make them any size you want. They're really super duper thin and I'm going to pick it up and show you how thin we roll them out. Look how thin the sides are. Like really, really thin, right? Almost like a cracker. But they're not supposed to be brittle, so they're still going to be soft. Okay, now we are gonna go in and add our little pieces of gold foil. And you just stick it right on the mitai, press it in, punch a, pluck a piece and then stick it in. So it just gives it that nice jazzy touch. And this is completely edible gold foil, guys. Not like foil from your... Not from the foil wrap thing. Nuh-uh. Okay, so this is coming along. And I kid you not, it tastes really good, especially if you like the pure taste of cashews. You can also do the same technique with almonds, except that just soak the almonds, peel the skin off and completely dry them thoroughly before you grind them. Otherwise you'll get like almond paste and that's not desirable. Okay. I think I've economized on this, right? I did pretty okay. I thought I wasn't gonna have enough and whatnot, but looks like I'm a-okay. Alrighty, folks. This is really, now it needs to just set at room temperature if you want. I've actually taped this down, but if you want, you can work in a sheet pan and then put it in the fridge to cool. So that was our Mitai lesson of the day. Some people like to sprinkle some uh, pistachios on it. Some people like to sprinkle some cashew nuts on it. You can just use it as a blank canvas and really make it your own with the flavors that you like. But I've done mango, cashew, and cardamom. So that was our tutorial for today. I can taste it and tell you how I like it. Um, see, this is kind of really cool to the touch. It's absolutely come down to room temperature. Oh, you can see that it's quite pliable, like you can bend it. It's not hard, it's not brittle. And I'm gonna try it so you'll see what it tastes like. Mm. This is better than any, oh my God, this is so good. Try it. That's my daughter, she's gonna try it. Isn't it better than any other Mitai store? Why does it taste like mango? That's really good. It's good, right? <laughs> yes, I'm winning. Yeah, so this actually, tastes really good and it's better than anything that you can buy in a Matai shop or in Jackson Heights or wherever only because it's completely pure there's no additives and yet it has a good shelf life so you can store it inside your fridge you can put it on the countertop it should be good and it still look how pliable it is and it's nice and soft if you like the pure taste of cashews a little hint of cardamom honey this dessert 
is for you. You have got to make this, okay? If you give it a try, let me know how it turned out. If you take a picture, tag me. I am on Instagram as Queen's Curry Kitchen, so you can tag me. And if you want to take one of my classes, you can always send me a message because I'm doing a lot of online classes right now. People have a lot of time and everybody's looking to up their skills. So if you want to learn Indian cooking in an Instapot, you can reach out to me. If you want to learn the Indian breads, you can reach out to me. If you want to learn the rice making class, you can reach out to me. There are all different levels of beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So depending on wherever your level is at, you will be eating like a king and you will be cooking like a pro. So you know what? I will see you in another one. For all the people, oh yes, I have to mention this because my heart is so full of gratitude. For all the people that have been calling me, that have been coming all the way to pick up the food, I really appreciate it. This food is homemade. It's not being made in a commercial kitchen because that's not where I'm going right now. So I'm definitely putting out the disclaimer. If you'd like a menu for the coming week, you can always send me a message, but it's also on my Instagram feed. You can check it out at Queen's Curry Kitchen on Instagram. But I just wanna say a big thank you for your love and for your support. And today I found out that a couple of people who are back on the food ordering train with me said that they really prayed for me to get better so that they could eat my food. So I totally ignore the last part that they could eat my food, but I, you don't know what it means for me to understand that somebody actually prayed for me. And that's the reason that even after my crazy COVID episode, I am here, I'm sharing what I know, and I'm happy to be in your company every day. So thank you again for your love and support. I greatly appreciate you all. Each and every one of you is very special to me. So thank you for taking the time and choosing to spend it with me. It really means the world to me. I will see you again in another one. Y'all have a great weekend. Stay blessed, stay safe, and take care of your loved ones. I will see you again. Until then, namaste and goodbye.